and lotches. I've got it all on my arm. I've got it, right there. I've got it all on my legs, I don't know if you can see. Which leads me on to today's adventure, is I'm gonna talk a little bit about the negatives of boat life. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, you know. Ahoy there! If you're new to the channel, I'm Heidi and I live and work aboard my canal boat home, the Rum Wench. I also have a little camper van called Polly and this is my little travelling companion Bonnie who's a little rescue that feels she can take on the world. So if you want to watch a middle-aged woman and a dog faffing about, then join us on our weekly quest in search of adventure, fun and giggles. So we're about to leave Great Haywood. It's been so lovely being here and this is a 14 day mooring. So I've been able to take some time out, visit my parents. Nikki's kept an eye on my boat because I'm still traveling with Nikki. But we're heading off now because we need water, empty our toilets, <laughs> empty our rubbish, and then yeah, find somewhere nice to moor. So I'm actually full of cold today, but I've been moored in this spot for 14 days and as a continuous cruiser, you need to move every two weeks. So it was quite an effort to drag myself out of bed this morning. So there's a bit of a queue here for the lock and I'm on Lemsip today. Yeah, decongestion for me cold. I'll put a rum in it later, so cheers! Woo! So we're here now at the water point, I've got my hose out, put it in my hole, filling it up. Yeah, Nikki's just moored alongside because there isn't any space. And we've both took our toilets, Nikki's still in there now emptying hers. Oh, the joys! And uh, there's bins here as well, so we're emptying all our rubbish, but that's great. It's nice to just get on top of all those jobs. So we've got our second lock of the day coming up now and I'm feeling really rough today. I woke up with a cold and now I'm aching in my back, my hips. So I think I've got some sort of flu thing. I have took a Lemsip, but this is one of the downsides living on a boat is we still have to move and do these sort of things when you're feeling shite. I mean, you can contact CRT if you're really poorly and ask for an overstay notice, but yeah, well, I'm only going to go a few hours today, so I'll be fine. I can rest later, can't I? Boating isn't all about rainbows and supping rum on the roof of your boat in the sunshine. It can be really hard work. Like today, for example, me not feeling 100%. But you know what? The minute I get at this tiller, I just feel amazing. I think it's the fresh air, a bit of diesel fumes. I try on my channel to show everything. I try to show me freezing my nips off in winter, cruising my boat, the muddy tow paths, they're having to move to charge your batteries or to get coal. You know, I do try to show it all and it is hard work, but I wouldn't change it if you paid me. I absolutely adore this life. And today when I'm there all feeling sorry for myself, I like, can't be bothered moving today. I'd rather have took my bra off and just chilled out on the sofa. Yeah, now I'm actually doing it, I feel amazing.
So we've just moored here before the lock at Weston and yeah, so I'm not even on the lock landing, we're just a little bit off because it's about to downpour. We've got torrential rain over the next few days, but I just couldn't do another lock. I am so worn out today and so achy. The thought of doing another lock, it just filled me with dread. What I need is my pajamas and a huge rum. So yeah, I'm gonna do that tonight now. Stay put for a couple of days, get on with all my work and then hopefully crack on to stone over the next few days. Morning everyone. Well we're setting off now today because we've just got no internet. I've still got this cold but I'm feeling a lot better than I did. Which leads me on to today's adventure is I'm going to talk a little bit about the negatives of boat life. It's not all sunshine and rainbows you know. It's not all stunning scenery, you know, and watching the cows in the fields and the sheep and the ducks, epic sunrises. <laughs> Sometimes you're cruising in horrendous weather just to fill up your water tanks, empty your toilets, empty your rubbish. And there's also, for me, another mega negativity to boat life, and that is internet. So today, there's a few reasons why I'm moving my boat. And the first one is cruising charges all my batteries in my battery bank, which gives me power. Number two, I need internet. I need to find this place where they've got internet. And three, because I've got so many badge orders in at the moment, all the Christmas badges, is I need to get myself to a post office. Normally I can go in a post box, but I've got a lot of orders going off abroad. So I need to get myself to a post office. So I'm hoping today to make it to Stone, which is the next town. Yeah, and this is the joys. But it's, it's lovely today, can't be grumbling. It's a lovely day. Oh wow, just look at this bridge. Love it. <laughs> Just whilst I'm faffing tying my ropes, can I just give a big shout out to Amos Brigham for becoming a supporter of the channel via Patreon. Thank you so much. of a gusher there. So this lock is quite a deep one, it's a big one and it is smothered in lockjizz. I mean it's all over, it's like being in the jungle. Yeah, a forest of jizz. So that's two locks down and I'm already covered in towpath mudges and lockjes. I've got it all on my arm. I've got it right there. I've got it all on my legs. I don't know if you can see. Can you see it there on the camera? Can you see? Can you? Let me just uh, all there. Oh, I mean, this is the joys of boating, especially around winter time. <laughs> oh, I love it, you know. I know, look, I'm whinging and that. I'm just trying to show you the challenges. I adore it. I love boat life. But people say, you know, you're not showing the downsides. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to show you the downsides in my way. <clears throat> and this is actually one of the downsides because <clears throat> I'm not still at 100% and I'm having to cruise, you know, so. <laughs> oh, but it's lovely. Because the minute I do get out and about, I just love it 
getting outdoors, the fresh air, you know what? It does you the bloody world of good, it really does. <laughs> Another challenge are these, these noisy buggers, Canada geese. Oh, they are just a nightmare. If you're more anywhere near these, you can't get any sleep. They're honking all through the night, all in the morning. Absolutely noisy. Yeah, so that's a challenge, is don't moor where there's Canada geese. So obviously there are other challenges when you live on a narrow boat. Things such as not having much space. When you live in a tiny home, you don't have much space. But I see that as a sort of, well, a sort of positive really, because I like it when I buy a new top or a new shirt or anything, I have to throw something else away. So it helps keep me sort of decluttered in a way, it keeps me sort of organized. But the biggest downfall for me, the biggest challenge living on a boat is the weather. And I think that's more as well, because I'm a solo boater and I single hand locks, if there's really strong winds, it's hard work single handing a boat in strong winds. It's hard work soloing the locks because if there's lots of rain, they can be slippy in the winter when it's icy and you're on your own, it can be quite dangerous because if you fall, there's no one around. So you, you know, you could end up being trapped or, well, and it doesn't bear thinking about, does it? So, you know, so I would say the weather's the biggest challenge. And there's been many a time where I've got myself absolutely drenched and moist, wetter than a mermaid's foof, just cruising to empty my toilet. Another thing that's worth bearing in mind, which is also a challenge, is in the next few weeks I've got some gigs and I've got some appointments, which means I need to make sure that my boat is moored next to somewhere I can catch a bus or a train to get back to my parents' address, because that's where my van's kept and I'm going to need that. So, yeah, so you have to make sure that you plan ahead. And I see these sort of things as not a challenge, but more of an adventure, a quest. Yeah, so I enjoy planning and sorting all that out. But yeah, it could be seen as a challenge. But it also helps to keep you organised, doesn't it? It gives you a focus. It gives me this quest to go on to make sure that my boat is moored in this certain place by this time so I can catch a train. Oh, <laughs> the joys! So this is the last lock of the day and this lock is in terrible condition. It is leaking so bad, I've not even had to open a paddle. Not that I can anyway, because it's out of order. But the lock's filling on its own just through the leaks. That is terrible. So the only paddle that's working is the gate paddle. But opening the gate paddle when your boat's so low down there is dangerous because it can sink your boat. So I'm just going to wait now, wait for this to raise on its own. So this leads me on to another potential challenge, which is the network, the canal network. There are places on the canals that are a challenge. I've done the Huddlesfield, the Narrows, the Broads, the Rochdale, and all these sort of canals are, they're lacking maintenance, to be honest, because they're underused. And as I've said before in the past, if we don't use these canals, we lose them. And when the infrastructure, which is over 300 years old in places, starts to fail, then that's a challenge. But the CRT have hardly got any money and they're trying to do everything they can. And it's just one of those things. <laughs> Again, it's another adventure.
So with that lock over and done with, another potential challenge for me is where am I gonna moor my home tonight? Where am I gonna stay? And is the space? Ooh, you just don't know, you can't plan it because you don't know till you get around the corner. Am I gonna be near a noisy road? Am I gonna be outside a pub? Is it gonna be too shallow so I can't get my back end in? You just never know. So I've not long moored up and tomorrow we're going to go and explore in Stone itself. It's a quirky little town full of history. Yeah, I'll take you with me. But anyway, today I just wanted to show some of the challenges of boat life, you know, because I don't want people going into boat life thinking it is all supping rums on the roof of your boat because it isn't. It's hard work, but I love it. So when I'm trying to show you these challenges and show you the negativities, I'm having a whale of a time. You know, because I enjoy that. I enjoy having to get up some days, going to get water, you know, things like that. It's it's always an adventure. Yeah, but I wanted to show them. Um, so anyway, that's enough for today. I'll see you in the morning. <coughs> so I'm going to go now and head into stone itself because apparently it's got quite a bit of history to it. And whilst exploring the town, I found these amazing railings, which said, Wolfir, King of Mercia, slew his sons for their Christian faith. According to the custom, Saxons laid stones where they fell. And then there were some more railings that said 670 AD, the queen built a church and the town grew up around it. So let's try and find out a little bit more about those railings. So back in around 650 AD, two Saxon princes converted their faith to Christianity and their father, King Wolf here, was not happy about it and he murdered him. Yeah, killed him, their own father. And his wife, the queen, was not happy about this at all. She was heartbroken and she built a huge monument. The local town of Staines, which back then was a small settlement, grew up around and the town began to take shape and build over the years to this beautiful big town that we've got today of Stone. So it changed its name from Staines to Stone. Yeah, a bit of history there for you. Now let's have an explore of this quirky little town. So me and Nick's have just sat and had a coffee here today and it's a lovely little place though and they've got a little market going on. It's fabulous, we're gonna have a look now what's around this market, anything we can buy, but it's a creative market, an artisan market. So yes, yeah, so everything's handmade, which is lovely. Gorgeous. Look at these here, look at these. I've got dragon eggs. Have you ever tasted a dragon egg? So I'm exploring this market here and I bump into a fellow boater and trader that's now got a land stall for the weekend and that's Sally and she makes all her own pottery. So let's have a little chat and she can tell us all about it. Okay, so I make everything on board my narrow boat. I've got a little studio there, complete with a kiln and a tabletop wheel. And everything's made there, apart from on really nice days. And then I set up my wheel on the towpath, which is absolutely fabulous. So I don't make anything massive, because obviously I can only get a really small kiln on the boat. But all the stuff here is handmade. I do wheel phone stuff as well, and lots of mugs. I like doing mugs with big handles that you can have with your gloves on, and you can have one big cup in the morning instead of two because who needs to go back for a second cup if you've got a big one yeah we all like a big one and so all this beautiful stuff here is made on a boat wow look at that how gorgeous is that cheers just needs a rum in that now <laughs> So 
So how amazing is that? I walk into a little canal town of stone and I've seen a boat trader selling her wares. Brilliant. So whilst I'm here now, I'm just going to pop into Morrison's and get myself a little bit of shopping. So I'm just back on the boat now and we're going to have one of these, a cherry wood spiced rum. Medicinal, obviously, because I've still got this cold. And just whilst I am pouring this, a massive thank you to all those that bought me a coffee this week. The Pirate Crew, thank you so much. It really does help. Let's just put that in there. Just go a little bit above the nipples. There we go. That's enough. Oh no, bugger it. I've got cold. So this really is medicinal. Yeah, I just can't shift this cold. So cheers. Woohoo! Mm. Oh, I'm feeling better already. Yeah. So thank you so much. So anyway, I'm still heading up north. So over the next few weeks, I'm trying to get to home waters before Christmas to pick up my camper van to go on this epic road trip to Europe. That's the plan. Yeah, it all depends if the van passes as MOT and this, that and the other, but I'll keep you informed along the way. <laughs> yeah, but thanks so much for watching this video, everyone, and I hope it didn't come across as a whinger. I just wanted to show you those negatives and everything. Anyway, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next week. And also, just a massive other cheers. woo to my patrons. Thank you so much for everything you do. Hmm. Oh, that's lovely that. Feeling better already. Yeah, so thanks very much with the follow-up. Shit. <laughs>